In this screencast, we walk through the steps involved in creating a private cloud. This can be useful for debugging and also eventually for adding new features to the cloud. We'll start with the instructions at GitHub Cloud Foundry with a virtual machine. So we download Ubuntu Server 10.4 at the 64-bit version and then use that in VMware Fusion. So we'll start that by going into VMware and creating a new virtual machine using the Ubuntu disk image that we downloaded. And then finish by naming it My Cloud. Fusion will go through the process of creating the virtual machine and installing Linux on it. Once that completes, we can log in. Fusion doesn't set the default console keyboard correctly, so we'll reconfigure the console. With that, we'll do an update, install Vim, open SSH, and curl. We'll look at the Ethernet configuration to find out what IP address it has. And then I'll go on to my local client machine, edit Etsy hosts, and add my cloud with that IP address so that we can then use that in other commands. SSH onto this new machine and use the terminal rather than the console to do most of the work from here on. One problem with the current scripts is that it attempts to install Java from the wrong locations. So we're going to specify the proper location, accept the license, and get Java installed properly. We can look at a list of the packages and grep for Java, see that it's installed for packages, and we can look at user bin Java and see that it's pointing to something. Now we can go to the main script that will install Cloud Foundry. This script can take an hour or so to run because it's going to be downloading a number of things from the internet. When it finishes, it will show a successful status. We can then add an alias for VCAP so that we can enter some VCAP commands without having to provide a full path. Now we can look at the status and see that everything stopped, but if we say VCAP start, it will go through the process of starting. One thing it wants to do is use the local web port, so we need to make sure that web sharing is turned off, so port 80 is available. Then we can set up a tunnel between our local port 80 and the remote port 80 so that it can serve web pages for us. Now we'll target the virtual machine that we've created, get some info on it. Then we need to create a new user since this is our first time using this cloud. We'll create a user for jfoster at VMware with a password of swordfish. Then we can look at info and we get a bit more information. We see the user and the space and memory that's available. Now we're going to work in our local environment and use the application that was created earlier. This is an environment Ruby application. We'll give it a name, accept the default for deployment, give it two instances, it will copy the application to the server, and then stage it and start it. Once it's started, we can open a web browser and go look at the information that's displayed by this Ruby application. It says, hello from the cloud, port 53046. We can refresh and see that the port changes to 60916. So we have two instances of this application running on our private cloud. We can look at other information. We have a second entry point for this application that shows us all the environment 
At this point, we can go to an earlier post that has a list of VMC commands and try out these different commands, getting help and see what information we have for help. We can look at who is the user. It identifies us. We can look at the target. It says we're pointing to vcap.me. Runtimes, which runtimes are available on this server. We can look at the frameworks that are available. We can look at the apps that have been uploaded to this server. We can increase the number of instances up to four. And then when we look at apps, we see that there's four running. If we ask for instances and give the app name, we will see that there's four of them running. We can reduce the number of instances. That will be reflected. And we can see some stats. What CPU usage, memory, disk, how long they've been running. We can see logs. And here we have standard error and standard out. We can look at the directory structure that's existing on the server, both for app and logs. We can stop our application. We can look at our list of apps and see that we have one app uploaded to the server with two instances, but they're stopped. If we delete the application, then it will be gone. And if we ask for a list of apps, it will no longer show up in the list. We can log out. We can stop our cloud. Attempting to get info will report that there's nothing there.